<laughs> right, good morning fish people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV. It is Saturday the 6th of April and I am on my way down to Decoy Lakes for the first round of the Feeder Master Qualifiers. So we're trying to get to Tamer. You've got to win your zone. Oh. And on my way down, I found somebody. God, it's windy out there. Oh, hello. Oh. Oh. You are on, Dave. It's just that screen's crap. Oh, set it wrong. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yes, so I'm, I'm on my way down to Decoy Lakes, using a lot more fuel than normal. <laughs> You're doing some filming, Dave, aren't you? Yeah, I won't be filming you. <laughs> it's too oh. early, it's too early for him to bite back oh. sharpish. It's it's too early. Wait until we've had his breakfast. You were at our house at what time? You <coughs> were at our house at half past five on time. Felt sick. He had to pick me up off floor, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> anyway, right, to qualify for the feeder masters to go to Tamar, you've got to win your zone of 20, haven't you, Dave? He's not fishing today. But I am Gutted. so. There's three zones of 20, and you've just got to win your zone of 20 to qualify for the Feeder Masters final in September, is it? Yeah, September, I think, something like that. August, September. So there we go, we're on his way, we're going to carry on with his journey. He's just out to have a tuck shop stop. What have you got, Dave? You've got a bag of goodies. Oh, oh, I've got some drinks, <laughs> some chocolate, some crisps. I've oh, just got to have your dinner, haven't you? Have a bit of dinner, Alan. God. <laughs> and we're off. And we're go. off for a full English. <laughs> we're in the right place, though, don't we? Yeah. I hope it's as nice as last time. So, <clears throat> on his way down to Decoy, we'll see you down there. And uh, we'll see where we get drawn, and I'm sure he'll be along. Come on, Alan, you can do it. Yeah, let's get in. Right, toodaloo. On his way, another hour's driving, and then we'll uh, see you in, in a while. Outside, Dave? Eh? Oh, come on. March is on. 1 0, Dave. <laughs> Deja vu. Cedar 11, Dave's doing all his uh, his videoing and interviewing people and stuff. Won't interview me though. Well, Dave. <laughs> Cedar 11, I think it's one from the end peg, so I don't know. I couldn't tell you it's a good peg or a bad peg. I've only fished this place 
twice, I think. Twice or three times at, at the very most. So we'll get down to his peg and we shall see what we're going to do. I met Steve Curtis, so nice chap. So it'll be a nice day. See you down there. Right, I'm all ready. We've got uh, 20 minutes to go. And here we are on Cedar Peg 11. Peg 11, I seem to draw Peg 11 a lot, don't I? Um, in the corner there, we've got uh, our George, Jeff Wiseman. We've got Johnny Vegas a bit further up here somewhere. We've got Caster, Matt Pilly, Tony Curd, Oliver Scothorn, uh, Zach Williams is on end peg up there. Um, Steve Curtis is going to be next to me here. So, uh, plenty of decent anglers, mighty fishermen indeed. But you've got to fancy these two end pegs. Where in with this lake here, uh, is, that's Elm. Um, and this is Cedar. I forgot what the other is still. Yew and Oak. Yeah, so it's Oak and Yew. Spells deep guy basically. So you've got a fancy Jeff here. In fact, he fancies it that much. He was never going to have a pound with me again because he said it's unlucky. But he's challenged me because of this peg. It's blowing into there and he's got a spare peg. He's got loads of room. You've got to fancy that. You have got to fancy it. But I also fancy mine. We've got reeds across there. We've got a platform and more reeds. Margins are really deep, but the shallowest bit is just just down here. So that's where I'm going to be. Uh, that's where I'm going to be feeding for a margin. And when I say shallowest, it's about two and a half foot there. That's the shallowest. And we've got a little bit down here again, about two and a half foot down here. So plan. I'm probably going to start short, have a look round, and work my way out. I'm not going to go over there straight away. I'm pretty sure there'll be fish there later on. I hope so anyway. Um, and it's dead simple. I've got two, two rods set up. I've got the superior 10 foot um, carbon active with a little hybrid feeder on it. It's only 24 gram that to start with, but I will be going up to a 36 gram because of the wind, just to try and keep it accurate. This is the 11 foot uh, Matt Parabolics that's the 420 Centris, that's the 520 Extremity, both the eight pound line on. This one I'll be using as a bait up and for fishing with either a bunch of maggots or corn or a couple of worms, air rig worms, whatever I fancy. I'm hoping it'll be just this rod all day, that would be fantastic. We'll see how things go. Bait wise, just shift this out of the way. Got some micros there made up. They're just settling down nicely. In fact, I'll leave that open just so it dries out a little bit more. We've got dead reds, live reds, corn. I've got more of each. I've put them in a cool bag to keep everything fresh. This will be my working, my working uh, tray, I suppose. That's for just testing my wafters, change of feeders, and different wafters. There we go, dead easy. That is a, it's a great thing about this this kind of fishing feeder fishing easy setup uh, let's hope we have a, a nice day the fish fight like crazy in here so uh, looking forward to it. I just hope we get if it's a lovely warm wind so we'll uh, we'll see how we get on eh there's not really that much more to say apart from let's hope we get the tactics right which is your peg management how much feed they'll want I'm not sure we'll have to judge that as we go along and, uh, and take it from there so yeah Dave's knocking about somewhere doing his little feature for bait tech it'll be absolutely killing him not fishing today <laughs> he's laughing at him laughing at him all the way here because <laughs> I've given him a lift on to so yeah uh, the tactics um, it, it ain't rocket science I think again you need a bit of luck Let's hope the fish don't want to be in Jeff's peg, they want to be in my peg. Yeah, so let's see how we get on. Over and out, we shall see you guys during the match. Oh yeah, right. So, a few seconds away. I forgot to mention we've got 46 mile an hour winds today. Forecast. 
Got the final at Afield tomorrow. Even stronger winds, so that could be the pole gone. There we go. Good luck, everybody. Apart from, apart from Jeff. <laughs> now we're just going to start really short. Six meters, five or six meters. We're in. Slap the clutch off a bit. We'll see if we get any uh, indication short. Oh, so we're away. Timer on. Let's start working it out, what's happening. But it's a lovely warm wind, I'm glad it is because with this wind, if it were cold, oh my goodness, I'd hate to think how cold it would be with this wind. Wowzers. Right, see you guys, eh? Enjoy in the match, everybody's in. I think most people start a short with look of it as well. Oh, Jeff's sneezing his socks off already. There's the excuses. He's just found out he's a fisherman. He's allergic to maize. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Got the wrong game he's in, isn't he? <laughs> oh dear. Right. See you during the match, folks. Well, being patient. There's one or two fish caught around me. Jeff's had a couple. Steve's had a couple to my right. He had three. But normally, here yeah, I get loads of liners. I'm not getting any until the last sort of 60 seconds there. So about half an hour in, the first fish, and then it just flown round. And boy, look at these fight. This wind's a bit of a pain. just been edging out. This will be the first time I've gone a little bit further, it's about 11 metres. Something wrong, people. Nice to see it go around. That's not exactly where I wanted it to be hooked. In the side of the, in the corner, but I preferred it bang in the middle. But there were plenty of liners just before. Four or five liners, and then Wallaby went round. But normally you get liners right from the off, and I've not had them today. Right, let's get that, uh, let's get another one in. So he'll have been at five, six, six pounder. Colour the pellets up, put a bit of liquid on, make them smelly. Let's see if we can get another one. It's really getting up that wind, and you can't miss. You can't miss the bites, the difference between the liners and the bites is ridiculous. It just smashes round. 
the aligners a dink, dink, and it just goes whack, straight round, brilliant. So we're off the mark. Let's hope it's the first of many. Put six on for that. There are a couple of fish behind, but it's early days yet, people. It's early days. Right, get in, off the mark. <laughs> oh. oh, I thought that was going to go then. It just, it just stopped. It's moved a few inch. Will it go again? Will it go again? Go on, fly around. And Steve, I thought it started short, but I must have missed it. He's gone straight over long. Now I'm pretty sure I'll get some long, but I want to try and pick a few fish off first and then get on there. And the margins for later, that's that's the plan. See if we can pick them off as we're going along. Have a good few hours out there, margins. That would be the perfect match if it all worked out. But you just never know with this fishing lark. I hope, I hope it might go around, but it doesn't look like it. Incoming! Big geese. So another, that's, so I've just started getting liners, so what we've been, you know, like 35 minutes. I've just started getting liners. Apparently Jeff says he's been getting linered to death. I hadn't had none. I was thinking, wow, why aren't I getting liners? But I ain't bothered as long as that tip just keeps going round. <laughs> First look on the far bank. I hope to pick a few more fish up. I've got a few F1s, a few more liners, but no takes, sort of 11 metres in the middle. I've tried with a little cage feeder and double corn, that can work really well here. And no signs, I've just tipped it over to that far bank. And after four minutes, it's gone round. Come to life now. It's hard to come to life, hasn't it? Calm down, Mr. Fish. Get my legs on him. Nice oh, tangled everything up in the net. At least that was bang in the middle of the bottom lip, which is where I want it. There we another four to five pounder. I think we've got to give that another go. I really was hoping to catch a fair few more. Short. Jeff's had a couple, but they're bigger than my fish, I think. They seem to be catching in the middle of the lake catching quite well. Oliver's had one he uh, up pulled out or it snapped or something and it was a big skimmer about three pound. <laughs> Double jabbed it and while it was laid on top he, he netted it. <laughs> Jabby sod. <laughs> Take my hat off to it lad. Take some skill that. Six gram feed of that to try and stop the wind blowing it. And it's still blowing to the left, but it's under that platform. I'm quite happy with that. I wanted it a bit more right, but we'll take that under there. The cast was a little bit high. Well, we've got away with it. We've got away with it. So Two, three, four. Got 14 pounds, an hour and a half in. But the 
have been a lot more fish caught up to my right in the middle. Now when I've come here before, everybody said you want to be in middle. But I've never seen anybody win it from middle when I've turned up here. It's always been ten pegs. Jeff's into one now. So we're quite happy being at this end. But they're definitely catching more in the middle of the lake this time round. Typical. And I've been in the middle and uh, don't get me wrong, I had plenty of fish but not the, the big weights that you need to win here at Decoy. And there's, they're all good anglers around here so they all know what they're doing. And peg behind me, this lake's in with us in our zone. And pegs catching quite well there. But the bites just don't seem to be, they're not dragging rod around every two minutes. And I might think, we've had four fish and 14 pound in an hour and a half. I think there's probably, he's probably got 30 pound. Steve will have 20 pound plus. Oliver will be the same. So I'm a little bit off the pace at the minute. Me and Jeff are, are lagging behind. So but I think it's fairly close with me and Jeff. You never know, they might just switch on. Well, there you go. We're back in, we're fishing. Let's see if we can get a few more do with some of the big lumps that's in here. <laughs> oh, second chuck over there, we've got another one. I don't think it's a big one. It's an F1. <coughs> strange bite as well, I wasn't even sure it were a proper bite. It was a very strange bite indeed. it well down. Only about a pound. Oh, that wind's strong. Well, I switched to a little window feeder and a bunch of maggots and it's gone round after five minutes and it went absolutely mad. I thought I was going to have to take my clip off. So it's either a big one or foul hooked. Steve has admitted to about 48 pound to be right, but me and Jeff have been struggling. I've got 15, Jeff's got about 10, and apparently they're catching really well down the middle. And this feels like a good fish. This is one of the big beasts that's in here. Certainly feels heavy enough. And there's just no response whatsoever. Tight over on method. And this just smashed round and then it went absolutely crazy. can see I'm not holding back. <laughs> He's putting a right scrap up. <laughs> wow. It's got to be a good fish this. It's got to be. It's uh, fins then. Yeah, I think it's definitely a proper monitor. This one, proper 
pretty pal. A pal. <laughs> it's what they say down south. Come on, some cherry face. I think Jeff's gonna come and make me a cup of coffee while he's doing notes. <laughs> Good old Jeff. Shouldn't say stuff like that when I've got a decent fish on. <laughs> Should I? He's putting a proper old scrap up. Steve's I've got another one, he's catching well, he's Steve. Steve Curtis. Oh, I thought you were gonna come up then. Here's a double figure one. Get away from my nets, I've split my nets left and right, so there's no net smack in front of me, but it keeps wanting to go. To the size which is where my nets are. God, arms aching ears. I do remember that they fight like crazy these fish here, these big ones. Come on, get away, get away, get away from there. You hippo. Got him. My wind's blowing me. Landing that pole round. Crikey. Strong wind that. Yeah, good fish. Okay, 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 I know you're not happy. Come on, let the mighties get this, get it undone. Alright, here we go. Right in the side, how do you go? Problem. It's got to be £10 I'm going to put down, he felt really solid, he did. Uh, it's proper blowing a hole in now, and I've, I've put a feeder full at about six, seven metres, left it half an hour, and nothing else long, and I just plopped it in short with five maggots on, and it's gone. Proper bite. fish that one for sure stay still and it's just on like a little window feed at five maggots and he's not letting me get his come here stay still stay still oh my god flipping about everywhere Yes, got it. 
It's got to be a, a good eight. A good eight, but oh, God, that wind. Well, I've had a, an F1 and another eight pounder. I've just gone in, it's been in one minute 49. I think it's another F1, this. Jeff's into one as well now. get around there so at least we're getting bites now nicely so I'm up to about 37 pounds now I'm gonna bait put some more bait in my margin and just see uh, and then go back out there and we'll have a look See if we can get a few more. I definitely need a good finish and I think Margie is the best place to have a really good finish. I put a feeder full short in front of me. And a couple of feeder fulls in my margin down there. I've chucked out 30 seconds straight round. Just not the big fish that I'm after. I put double corn on that time, hoping to try and get a bigger fish. And the F1s just love it, don't they? Oh my god! <laughs> I can't lift me. It's that strong is wind, I can't lift me. Bloody heat out. Just cannot. Landing net, should I say, not keen net. You've got to be mighty strong with this wind. But yeah, what a different, unbelievable changing from method to this. I don't know whether they just start feeding or whether it's the bait I've put in, you just don't know, do you? But the, uh, the traditional has been unbelievable. 39 maybe 40 pounds steve still catching tomorrow he's just got a big fish he's doing really well now is steve right there's about what have we got 35 37 minutes left the good finish i want has turned into a nightmare i've looked into two good fish out there and they've both kited left and got snagged up and they were good fish as well is that a fish? yeah must be swimming towards me I've just cast that out as well um, I've lost they felt like proper ones as well and I could feel the snag as they went into it and then uh, I've lost lost all my gear twice two casts, two fish good fish and then lost my gear I even cast about three yards to right of where it was before and all <laughs> so disappointing that, that that's literally being in 45 seconds. I thought it dropped back, I, I just as I was tightening my line, I thought I'm sure that's just dropped back, but I couldn't. It's hard to tell when your line's blown. It's blowing in a bow that way. But uh, oh it's just so frustrating. And they felt as heavy as this. Well in fact they felt a bit heavier to be honest, but you never know, dear folks, you never know. I've had a look down the margin there and there's not I've had nothing, no liners or nothing. I'll probably have another look towards the end unless it keeps going round. Uh, yeah, two two feeders. And two good fish lost.
so frustrating. So frustrating. But Steve, Steve's done really well to my right, he's kept catching. Keep it between your legs and you don't realise how strong your line is until you're trying to get it out of a snag. Come on, fishy. He's really not wanting to show his face, is he? I think we're miles behind, if I'm honest, but I've still enjoyed it, I've properly enjoyed it, apart from losing those two fish, it just does your head in, wasted about 20 minutes there. I've had no, no bites hardly over there, and I've had three casts, three bites, bites have come in less than a minute, each one. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Yes, certainly put a good scrap up. And he's off again. It's wind and we've got it tomorrow. Oh. Blowing a hooly, folks. <laughs> wow, be a good fish. That's for sure. Come on, son, show your face. Going towards my nets again. aggressive any of these fish. Very aggressive. Well, if the other two are like that, my goodness me, I'd have been up to about 70 pounds. Very good fish. He's got to be another eight or ten pounder. Oh, and it was ready for coming out as well. Wow! Get in! Again! It's gone round again. Can't believe it. Could have done with a few hours of this, I'll tell you. Brilliant. And it didn't really go out like a jab and then drop back. And it feels like another good fish as well. Come on. 
on some. Again within like 30 seconds that. That's the only thing I don't like about the elastic. The elastic allowed it to turn. Come on, son. Again, there you see, it just flicks its head and it allows it to turn that elastic. I'm sure I could have got him then. Same sort of stamp. Seven pound, eight pound, maybe seven pound. Seven pound I'm gonna give him. without bites and then it's just gone crackers come on the mighty fish let's have a couple more I'm still behind Steve I'm not sure how far I'd behind, behind him I'd be with the other two that I lost but can't dwell on that fouls can't dwell it I'm not bothered wind just didn't quite go where I wanted it but I did get a fish from there earlier yeah weird bites I seem to remember weird flicky bites before I'm not sure if that were a line it dropped back a slight little bit They're being settled there, they're probably lifted on it. Just drop back around a little bit. Right, there we go. Timer on. Yeah, open it might go straight round. Well, if that don't go round in a few minutes. I'll recast it and just get it a little bit tighter up to them reeds. It's just blue left. As you can see, it's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? That will go down in a few minutes. I'll recast it and just get it tighter up to them reeds. Oliver's in. Let's go thorn. 
but I think my pound's safe with Jeff again. <laughs> go on, go on, the quids. Oh, I love taking them golden nuggets. Right. We'll see you guys. Well, I'm not sure. Had the weighing, maybe the next one, don't know. We'll see. I'll make my mind. Quite a few days after, um, so I'm going to have to try and remember it. I'm pretty, usually pretty good at that, I'm sure. One of two, one or two of you will put me right after watching the video, but um, decoy lakes, cracking venue, plenty of hard fighting fish in there. I think overall that the lakes have fished very well. Um, there's been a lot of fish caught, especially the end pegs. Um, and I ended up drawing seed at 11, as you saw. I wasn't unhappy with that when I got down there, down at the bottom. Usually, they say that the middle is the right area to be. Um, I don't know why you'd think end pegs would always dominate there, but for some reason, middle pegs can be quite useful. But I've never really done that much in the middle. It's always been, when I fished it, the end pegs have really done well. Apart from when Jeff and Woody's been on them. <laughs> Sorry lads, sorry. I just have to get that one in. They give me it, don't they? You know they do. But, you know, blowing an absolute... It, it never looks as bad when you're looking at it. I've, I've checked the video out. It never looks as bad as what it is. That wind was horrendous. So when you're going back to cast, your feeder ends up over there to your left. It's. I mean, I cast from my right. I know a lot of people go to the left here. I know Dave does that. I've, I've tried it, I can't do that. I, I've always done it to the right. So Steve Ringer does it to the right. I don't know, the loads of other people. It's whatever uh, choice you go down. So that's how I like to do it. And the feeder, by doing that, blows to your left. And it, you know, there's a couple of times I've gone back and gone, whoa, let's just try again and then get it. But because uh, it can twist around your, your tip and create a crack off. Luckily for me, it never happened. I did lose two lots of gear on bloody snags, big fish and all. Fishing in that area, pulled fish through it and not had a sign until I've hooked what felt like proper units. You know, you can just tell they're heavy. It's like, ooh, here we go. Um, so tactics wise, it was method and traditional feeder. The traditional feeder was also there as a bait up. I'm only ever going to bait up in my margins and maybe just in front of me. Was it worth chucking over to the side and putting some bait? I, I, could have been actually but you know 
you can do that by having a few quick casts with the method. So I've set off short uh, pretty much for nothing. First time I've ever been there and not been lined to death on those lakes. Honestly, I can't explain to you how many liners you get. I know some of you will be thinking, come short to do this, do that. Tried it all. In fact, I remember one year Johnny Arthur had that many liners, he had his rod up in the air like that to try and get away from them. I think he actually won the competition on the most liners that year. Um, it is it is ridiculous. And all those tactics of moving, coming towards you, just doesn't work. You just get liner to death wherever you are. But this time, I'd hardly any liners until eventually I've had a liner and then it's gone round. I can't remember how, how far into the match it was. I think it might have been half an hour, 40 minutes or so. And I've ended up picking a few fish off from round there. But I've, I've then gone long and had a few, and then that's gone quiet. And then I've gone, I've baited some short, and I've tried like a traditional uh, style type fit, uh, free running with maggots on and, and corn, and I've had a few good fish from there. But again, it stopped. It was like, why, why aren't they staying? Refed it, went back on it, nothing to me that were wrong. I don't know. It, it, was, it was weird. I, I wasn't watching. I knew Steve was catching over to the far bank and he's been catching consistently all day. But it seemed to be catch a few, then nothing had to change, and then you get one first cast. And I think, in hindsight, after talking to one or two people, and this is where the peg management kicks in, and it's hard to explain to me. In fact, it's hard to work out yourself. I think regular moves that day from speaking to people like Alan Scothorn and stuff like that, I think regular moves away from where you've caught a few, if it's gone dead, try somewhere else, go back somewhere else, keep trying, might have been a better way that day to keep those fish coming because every time I made a move and it wasn't like, I probably made like four different moves and every time I've gone on I've caught some fish straight away maybe a, a quicker rotation to keep those fish coming might have been the key to double up on what you were catching because I've had quite a few hours with nothing, not even a sign and them lakes are rammed so I think that might have been key from what I've heard uh, you know when I think back, yeah that sounds very similar to my match every time I've made a move it's gone round again, that's the difference between the top angler, the better anglers that are fishing these matches that switch onto that straight away and end up catching quite well or there are people that can't quite get it in the same spot and wherever it lands it'll do and that that will have worked so I'm sure there's been one or two people that's done that as well I'm not mentioning any names I'm not I'm just sort of saying I've seen it when I've been on like Southfield res I've been down one hole and seen people crashing it in not going in right all over the place and absolutely wiped the floor with me and I've just thought it doesn't seem to matter where you chuck it, if they're there, you'll get one. And sometimes that can be the case. So, But I'm not going to go at anybody, that's just how some people fish. I like to think down the same hole is the, same, is the right way. So what we had at the weigh-in? Um, I've weighed in 64 pounds, or was it 67 pounds something? I can't remember now. 64 pounds 13, I think it was. Um, if I remember, I get Edley to put the results up. I think I've come fourth in my section. Steve Curtis to my right has been catching consistently, mainly on the far bank all day. How accurate he's been, whether he's been moving across, I don't really know. I didn't really take that much notice. I wanted my back to the wind because it was just blowing a hole. I've had a look now and again. I think he was in the same spot. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. I've seen him try short. I've one or two, but mainly on the other side. And he's caught really consistently all day quite frustrating when you're doing pretty much the same thing and not getting a bite he's ended up with, with 129 pounds i think and he's our qualifier out of the two lakes for the feeder masters so well done steve curtis on qualifying for tamar and good luck in the final sum fish, fished a very nice match indeed um i won't mention it but i did beat oliver scott on <coughs> oh, i can't believe that come out sorry oliver <laughs> oh and a golden nugget off my old mate, George. Uh, Jeff Wiseman, sorry. <laughs> Easy pound, that. It won't cards, won't it? Defo and peg. 
still smashed him up. He reckons he had £40, but don't know about that. <laughs> um, Johnny Arthur's qualified. Well done, son. And who was the... Oh, I've forgotten his name. I don't know him that well. It's the Feederland guy, the owner. Um, oh, I'm terrible with names. The Feederland owner, well done. That's what I'll say. He's qualified. Fabian. Can't, don't ask me to pronounce your surname, I don't know, I can't remember, but it's Fabian, I think it is. He's also won the match and he's qualified for the final. So good luck guys, good luck in the final. What a set of mighty fishermen you are. Right, that's it for me. Um, I've got Fishermania next Saturday at Lindholm Lakes. I'm going to try and get down for the practice on the Friday and then we'll see how we get on. It'd be all, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty much decided I'm just going to fish shallow. <laughs> that's it. I think the best chance of winning Fishing Mania at Lindo has got to be shallow, so I'm going to get down there, set up, get a few shallow rigs set up, and have a go. Give it a go, that's what I say. So, thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely cracking match. Lots of fish caught. Thanks to Oliver and Alan Scothorn for organising the event. Lee and Mick Viles, is, uh, they're away on England duties. So, well done, guys. Thanks a lot and much appreciated. So, hope you've enjoyed the video, folks. My first Feeder Masters. Plenty more to come. Looking forward to them. So, don't forget, it's absolutely free. Subscribe to this channel. And if you click that notification bell, you will get all our videos as we upload them. And thumbs up. It will be very, 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 very nice. Won't it, monkey? Tonight. So uh, there we go. That's it from me. Take care, folks. Oh, if you click that notification bell, you will get all our videos as well. Have I said that? Yeah, I yeah. have. Just said you've put me off, monkey. Right. Until next time, take care, folks, and don't forget to fish on. <laughs>